Raspberry Pi 5 is here and it's more powerful than ever. With great power comes great responsibility. If you're using a Pi for personal projects or even enterprise level tasks, you need to take security seriously. In this video, I'll show you how to harden your Pi's network to protect it from malicious actors. Stick around to learn the step-by-step -step process to keep your data and device safe. Welcome back to the channel. Today, we're focusing on one of the most important aspects of using a Raspberry Pi from a security perspective. We'll be covering understanding the risks facing your Pi, essential steps for network hardening, creating a secure environment with firewalls and isolation, best practices for continuous protection. We're also going to look at a high profile incident at NASA's Jet Propulsion Lab where a root Raspberry Pi caused a serious security breach. The Raspberry Pi 5 is a game changer. In the single board computer world, it's faster, supports more complex projects, and can even handle some serious workloads. But because it's so capable, it's also an attractive target for hackers. Whether you're using it as a home server, a media center, or a small office automation system, your Pi holds critical data and it needs to be protected. So what are the common threats? Malware and ransomware. If your Pi is connected to the internet, it can be infected just like any other computer. Second, brute force attacks. Attackers try endless username password combinations to gain access. Third, network exploits. Unsecured ports, updated software, or weak configurations can be exploited to breach your Pi. The bottom line, you need proactive measures to stay safe. Before we jump into the how-to, let's look at the real incident that occurred at NASA's Jet Propulsion Lab in 2019. An authorized Raspberry Pi was connected to the JPL networks. Attackers discovered this unsecured device and used it as a springboard to pivot into other areas of NASA's network. Sensitive data was compromised and it took time and resources to isolate the breach and secure the systems. This incident highlights the very real dangers of leaving any Raspberry Pi, even one inside a sophisticated organization, improperly secured. The first step of network hardening involves changing the default password and implementing two-factor authentication. Right after you install Raspberry Pi operating system, use the Raspi config utility to change the default password. Never leave the default Pi user or password as is. And that can be changed by typing in the sudo Raspberry by config command which you can access to from system options password you can also enable two-factor authentication use a service like google authenticator to require a one-time code tools like libpam google authenticator can be installed on your pi to implement two-factor authentication first thing you have to do is to update your pi by running the sudo apt-get update command and then run in the sudo apt-get install libpam google authenticator and then once you run google authenticator authenticator that will give you confirmation that it's been installed second step is to disable unnecessary services and protocols you can check running services by running the command sudo system ctl list unit files type service and disable any services you're not using such as vnc or samba if you don't need them so you can disable anything by just running the command sudo systemctl disable and you can type in the service name whether that is vnc or samba you can also close unused ports you can use a tool like Nmap to scan your Pi from another device to see which ports are open. You can disable or block any ports that you don't explicitly need. The third step is to keep your Pi updated. Updating your Pi's operating system and installed packages is crucial. Outdated software is often targeted by hackers who know about its vulnerabilities. You can update your Pi by running the sudo apt-get update command. You can also create a secure environment and that can be done by using a firewall. You can install and configure the UFW which stands for uncomplicated firewall. UFW is user friendly and can block unauthorized connections and the way to get it running is by running the sudo apt-get install UFW uh, followed by the sudo UFW default deny incoming followed by sudo UFW default allow outgoing which after you can run the sudo UFW allow SSH and then sudo UFW enable and this should enable your firewall. The second 
step is by implementing access control lists, also known as ACLs. You can limit which devices can even try to connect to your Pi. For instance, if you only connect from a specific IP or subnet, configure your router's ACL so that also only that IP range can reach your Pi. The third step is to isolate your Pi's network. You can create a dedicated VLAN or subnet. On many modern routers, you can configure separate VLAN or guest networks for your Pi. This separation prevents intruders from easily moving laterally to other devices on your home or office not network if your Pi is ever compromised. When it comes to the best practices for continuous protection, one thing you can do is you can monitor for suspicious activity. You can set up system logs and consider using IDS, which stands for intrusion detection systems, like fail to ban, which you can easily get by running the command sudo apt-get install fail to ban. You can also regularly review security settings by scheduling a monthly or quarterly security audit, check your firewall rules, your access control list, and user accounts to ensure everything is still locked down. To stay informed about threats, you can subscribe to Raspberry Pi forums, Reddit communities or security newsletters to keep track of new vulnerabilities and patches. Securing your Raspberry Pi isn't complicated, but it does require attention due to detail and consistent maintenance. By following these steps, changing default credentials using two-factor authentication, disabling unnecessary services, updating regularly, setting up a firewall, and isolating your Pi network, you drastically reduce the risk of a devastating security breach. Thank you so much for watching. If you found this video helpful, give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing for more Raspberry Pi tips. Stay secure out there and I'll see you in the next video.